Doctor Who Doctor by Doctor. Tenth Doctor Era Overview and Top 10 Stories. The Era of the Tenth Doctor, as played by David Tennant, ran from Christmas Day 2005 to New Year's Day 2010 and consisted of three seasons and a handful of specials. The Era was a massive mainstream success but many fans accused the period of it achieving that success at least in part by sacrificing much of what made the series and the character unique and special. In particular the decision to at times portray the Tenth Doctor as a sort of Lothario James Bond type with a woman in every time zone may have appealed to teenage fangirls fantasizing that they could be one of them but made little sense for the character and did little to endear this incarnation to older fans. The characterization of the Tenth Doctor irked in many other ways too, coming across as a bipolar figure who veered between being irritatingly cheery and irritatingly self-pitying, while the moral hypocrisy the character displayed, with his personal morality sometimes varying wildly between episodes from a no second chances and even sadistically vengeful god to a pacifist to the point of utter stupidity who cries over the master and even wants to save Davros in ways that made both very little sense and did little for his likability as a character. Story-wise the era was almost as schizophrenic as its lead character, with many episodes approaching brilliance but many others, particularly the likes of New Earth, Voyage of the Damned, Partners in Crime, The Fires of Pompeii, The Doctor's Daughter and Journey's End being among the worst ever broadcast at the time. Fandom's reception to the era is also schizophrenic, with many, particularly those who fell in love with the series during the era and because of Tennant, seeing it and him as the best ever, but many others, particularly of the older generation, seeing him and it, as one of the worst. Top 10 Tenth Doctor Stories 10. Love and Monsters one of the most hated stories and one of the rare that is loathed by new fans as much as old ones, yet I loved the hell out of this on transmission and still regard it as one of the best of series 2, a very poor season by any objective measurement. A bizarre knockabout comedy about a bunch of geeks obsessed with the doctor getting infiltrated by a nasty alien who eats them one by one, Love and Monsters is very entertaining, very very strange, and often very funny but it has an oral sex joke at the end and that's just not on with Doctor Who fans of any generation. 9. The Sontaran Stratagem. I didn't think too much to this 2008 two-parter at the time but on repeat viewings I've grown to really rather enjoy it in a dumb kind of way. Christopher Ian is great as the head baddie Sontaran and this is a far preferable modern version of Unit than we've had in the Moffat era with Kate I'm so boring let me tell you about my dad instead Stuart. 8. Gridlock. This 2007 story was the last in the so-called New Earth trilogy. I don't like the first one, The End of the World, and Series 2's New Earth is one of the worst of the era, if not ever so it was a surprise to find this surreal gem about a never-ending traffic jam as enjoyable as it was. 7. Silence in the Library The last Moffat story of the Davis era is a flawed but still entertaining two-part piece of work. It's the first appearance of River Pong, but we'll not hold that against it. 6. Tooth and Claw The best episode of the largely shite series 2. This is a fun old school gothic horror werewolf tale with a great deal of atmosphere and some wonderful performances. 5. Planet of the Oud. Series 4 is a season that veers wildly between great and utter bullshit, but when it works it's very good, and this is a solid science fiction thriller with a darker tone than is normal for the era and a very good guest villain in Lord Percy. Alright darling. 4. Blink. Brilliant but massively overrated, probably not least because Carey Mulligan is just so utterly fucking delectable in it. Come to Papa. 3. Midnight. Russell T. Davis, like his overall era, veered as a writer between God smackingly bad and completely fucking out of control, but with occasional flashes of brilliance and this claustrophobic horror story is one of those flashes. 2. Last of the Time Lords. 
Many new who critics like myself hate this three-part season two finale, but I think it's a hoot, as is John Sim's Joker-like master. Ambitious, epic and genuinely exhilarating, it does fall apart a bit toward the end but not enough to really impact my enjoyment of it. Great fun. 1. Daleks in Manhattan. The Horns of Nyman of New Who. Well alright it's not that good but it is massively fucking underrated and a wonderfully dark surreal black comedy whose tonal inconsistency creates a delightfully odd mix I find rather irresistible. Easily my favorite story of the era. The Tenant era was the point where I realized that New Who was not going to be what I really wanted from a supposedly modernized version of Doctor Who, and there were times where my patience with it was severely tested. Series 3 is the best season of the era, with 4 staggeringly inconsistent and 2 just plain shit most of the time. There are some good stories, as indicated, but at the time it was my least favorite era and while that may no longer be the case after the Peter Crapaldi era, I still can't summon the enthusiasm to give it anything higher than A, I feel incredibly generous as it is, C-.